Let's do... <laughs> Let's do Nathan. Nathan flat smacking on a plane. This is, this is my nightmare, is getting on a plane ride. And I already hate planes. I'm afraid of heights. I've been on planes many times. I've been on planes dozens and dozens of times, both for work and for vacations. Like, I, I've, I was flown down to do a, 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 a conference in Texas and talk there. And there was another one I went to another time. I, I, I've been on planes, but I'm terrified of them. Daddy Sumo with 10 bits. I was referring to the habit of Japan to have God killed by teenagers in video games. Ah, uh, okay. Funny about the ben 42. Oh my God, I never realized how much I missed Nathan. Yeah, Nathan is a flat earther. Nathan, as he will often mention, almost as much as Ben Shapiro mentions that his wife is a doctor, he mentions that he ha is the founder of the largest flat earth group on Facebook, which has a ton of members. So Nathan apparently went on this plane and started proselytizing flat earth nonsense to the poor, poor passengers who are, of course, unable to walk away from the situation because they're in a pressurized tube flying through the sky. <laughs> I'm guessing by the end of the video he'll be told to stop, but who knows. Ugh. Oh. His pamphlet's awful, too. I don't know if we've ever actually taken the time to look at his pamphlet, but we should sometime. The plane was still better than the playground? That's true. <laughs> no person has ever been turned to a flat earther because of his pamphlets. Like... Does he realize that or no? Dr. Gamble with 100 bits, the real nightmare at 20,000 feet. <laughs> Stop. No. No one wants to deal with your stuff. When was this? This was in 2018. $10. $5 in Air Marshal Haymakers him. I wish. Ben42. Nathan's pamphlets are clearly the successor to Chick Tracks. <laughs> Nothing funny he seems to think that one pamphlet equals one flat earther. Well, yeah, he thinks his arguments are airtight. So if you read his thing, of course you're going to think that the earth is flat. It's very, very silly. There's nothing funny about the tools of capitalism. <laughs> I've had a <laughs> daddy sume with 10 bits. Um, I'm going to have to do the TV edit of this because I'm trying to swear less. Um... I've had enough the of, of these mother flipping pamphlets on this Monday to Friday plane. <laughs> you guys seen that on the snakes on a plane TV edit? It's basically what it says. Antipodian squid with 100 bits. Planes literally use the curvature and rotation of the earth for efficiency. I know. I, I've mentioned this before. But planes follow parabolic flight paths. Um, flight tracker... So if you don't know, let me see if I can zoom out a little bit more. There we go. If you've ever looked at, like, flight paths of planes, they follow parabolic flight paths. They don't fly in a straight line, at least as it appears on a flat map, because a straight line on a flat map is not equal to a straight line on a sphere, which we actually live on. So if you're actually traveling in a straight line from one place to another, on a plane, on a globe, on a flat map, the flight path is going to look parabolic. I've never heard an explanation from flat earthers why flights take parabolic paths on flat maps. Because they don't have an answer, because of course the answer is because the earth is round. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite is Yippie Kaye, Mr. Falcon. <laughs> There's a good one from um, the TV edit of The Big Lebowski, too, where he's smashing uh, the car and he said, Do you see what happens? Do you see what happens when you. When you fight a stranger in the Alps. Because <laughs> the original line is F a stranger in the A. But TV edits are wonderful. 
Oh, when you find a stranger in the Alps. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, stop. I'm so... I'm so secondhand embarrassed for him. He's reading it. I think Nathan legit believes this works. I think he really thinks that he's just converting all these people. It's very weird. His logo looks bad. Yeah, it's not great. Daddy Sume with 10 bits. I hate the TV additive live for your die hard. He can't even say his tagline. It's edited out of every version. Ugh. Is that the fifth one? I haven't even seen that one, I don't think. She goes, are you serious? Welcome aboard. Yes, yes. I like your hat, dude. That's fresh. The fourth one? Oh, I actually like the fourth Die Hard movie. It's silly, but it's fun. The Stellar Sea Cow is Nathan uh, J.W. I mean, if he thinks people can be converted with a flyer, he must be a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> that applies to a lot of mm, culty stuff. Um, Skald Mererik. Did he book his flight to hand out these pamphlets? Oh, I hope not. Skald Merrick. I think that's how it's pronounced. <laughs> Stop! No one wants your stupid pamphlets! Oh god, it's a plane ride to Florida or from Florida too. I think that kid's wearing a Donald Duck hat. No, it's not. It just has a very, very yellow bill. Why? It will be fast enough. I promise. Well, Stop! I already got him. <laughs> Hands it back. I wish I would run into Nathan and he would hand me a pamphlet. It would go like in my collection of weird, random, culty tracts. Skjald Merrick. It's Skjald Mare Erica, but I effed up while changing my Twitch username. Okay. Skjald Mare Erica. Okay, Skjald Mare Erica. Skjald Mare Erica. I'll try and remember that. If the overhead bins are closed, they are being occupied. Shout out NASA Lies for the gear. Antipodian and Squid, the irony is I would happily take one of his pamphlets to make fun of it online. This guy. Yeah. Same. Yoink. Oh, God. Let's try and read this pamphlet, okay? Since we're doing this anyway, I guess he's showing it. Why not take the time to read it, okay? Um, yeah, Hannah, it's Dada Sume. You need to get the right name. You, Dada Sume, you need to get my name right too. Dada Sume. I say that. Daddy Sume. Flat Earth Bling. Yeah. Let me see if I can find a better version of this. Nathan Thompson Flat Earth Pamphlet. Do, do, do.
<laughs> Here's an article from when he got in trouble for handing them out at a playground. <laughs> uh, does anyone have a scan of the pamphlet? That's what I want to know. There's nothing funny it's got to exist somewhere capitalism. online, right? Okay, let me try and read it, I guess, off the screen, and we'll do our best. It's going to be a little tough, but we can try. Um, Logarth with 10 bits. I, I go to a lot of conventions like comic, sci-fi, etc., and there are inevitably religious folks or religious tracks placed around. And let me tell you, I still have 20 or 30 chick tracks I collected over the years. Chick tracks are fun. They're fun to, to collect. I have a decent number of them as well. Let's see, top 10 proofs. Water is a natural level. Uh, no, Nathan, over time, or not over time, over distance, over a long distance, water curves. I hate to break it to you, bud. But if you look, you can see this too in stuff like surf or tension of water and little water droplets, it curves. Water can, in fact, curve, and it does. Airplane level flights. This is him talking about the fact that airplanes don't have to account for curvature or whatever um first of all no the reason that planes feel like they're flying straight is because they're in the atmosphere and you're moving and the i feel like flat earthers problems a lot of it is them underestimating how absolutely huge the earth is the earth is huge it's ginormous the change over time of the curvature is so gradual, you don't notice it, even on an airplane that's going very quickly. Science says it's stationary. No, no, it straight up doesn't. I can't read that. Every scientific experiment has proven Earth is completely stationary. The sun, moon, and stars. Wow, that's just an outright lie. No, no, they haven't. Even like flat earthers like globe busters have done multiple experiments that have shown that the earth is in fact rotating and moving around the sun. Horizon is always eye level. Not only is the horizon always flat to the observer, but it raises to eye level. High altitude amateur balloon footage without a fisheye or GoPro is always shows a flat earth. If you're using a balloon, you're probably not high enough in the air in order to actually see the curve. But I have seen footage of things that go up into the high atmosphere and you can kind of see a curve. How does anyone believe that? No idea. We see too far. This is footage of Mount uh, Canagou in France is astounding from 175 miles away. According to the curvature formula, blah, blah, blah. The peak should be 3,000 feet below the horizon. Um, refraction the cannot lift capitalism. mountains. No, that photo was taken from another high peak. So if you were at ground level, then the bottom of the mountain might be covered by however much. And again, I don't trust flat earthers math ever. Don't do it. So, the reason that you can see it is because they're on another high peak taking a photo. The dome is real. There are lots of proofs we live under a dome. Sun, dogs, halos, rainbows, and star trails all prove this. No, they don't. Rainbows are happening because of refraction of water droplets in the atmosphere. It's not because there's a dome. NASA admits they can no longer leave low Earth orbit, but they could in 1969. Okay, so this is outdated. I do wonder if he has changed this. The reason that that was the case was because NASA was using rockets in the 60s, and then they didn't, like, maintain those rockets, and also those rockets were outdated and unsafe. So they stopped using them, and then for a period of time after the shuttle program closed, we just didn't have any active equipment to do so. Now, with a partnership with SpaceX, we're going into space again. It happened very recently. I do wonder if he has changed this since considering that we've been to the International Space Station quite recently. Stephen J. Neptune Man with 10 bits. In the 80s and 90s, people were annoyed by Hare Krishnas at airports. In the 2020s, people are going to be annoyed by Flat Earthers. Yeah, I think the they changed, like, airport policies because of uh, Hare Krishna, because there were so many who were proselytizing in airports. Moonlight is cold. A laser thermometer proves moonlight has a colder than in the shade. No, um, this has been proven wrong multiple times. What they do is they show, they take the temperature just on the ground somewhere randomly, and then they'll take the temperature of something under shade 
because it has a shadow, so like under a tree or something, and then it'll be warmer under the tree where the shadow is, and they'll be like, aha, moonlight makes things cold. No. What's happening there is if you're in the shadow of something, you're probably under something like a tree or an umbrella or something. And there's this thing called um, radiated cooling, something to that effect. But basically, if you're just in a field out in the middle of nowhere, the ground is going to cool quicker in the nighttime because there's nothing blocking the heat from rising up into the atmosphere. Whereas if you're under a tree or something, someplace where there would be shade, then the tree is going to block some of the natural, like... Uh, raising of the heat and the diffusion of the heat is going to be trapped by the object that is causing the shade. <sighs> Cres crepuscular sun rays. The sun is smaller than Earth and very close. No, no, it's not. The sun is very far away and much, much, much larger than Earth. We can trace the angle of rays back to their source above the clouds. The sun is clearly not massive or 93 million miles away. The distance varies because of the elliptical orbit but yeah it is about 93 million miles away on average mm, it's not close gravity is magic newton's theory has never been proven it has gravity is easily explained by density and buoyancy no it's not and they don't even know what they're talking about when they say this because the formula for buoyancy you know what you need in order to calculate something's buoyancy gravity so if you say that things fall to the ground, not because of gravity, but because of density, it doesn't even make sense if you don't believe in gravity. You cannot calculate buoyancy without gravitational constants. My goodness. Boats over the curve. It's a common misconception that boats disappear out of the sight because of the curve of the earth, the introduction of blah, 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 of these cameras, shows that the real problem is the of the supposed curve. Basically, they're saying that sometimes when you use certain cameras, you see something appear to go over the curve, and then if you zoom in, you can actually bring it back into focus. This is true to an extent, and some of that has to do with... Um, uh, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Refraction of light. But if the boat continues to go, no, it'll go over the curve over some period of time. So everything on this is complete BS. But if you could describe it, this is my neighbor. Peace. That poor guy. Ugh. Anyway.